on Echo 6. The game is great. I've got no doubt we can beat that. And now we are ready. I hope you're ready for some dolphin fun here. We're going to go over to Echo the Dolphin with Grimshins. All right. All right. It is that time. It is dolphin time. And uh, I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, my name is Grimshins. And uh, on commentary, I am joined by... Hello, I am Mekion, and I'm normally an Echo Junior runner, and uh, also do occasionally do a little bit of the Echo itself. Yeah, this is the uh, first Echo the Dolphin game. Uh, I previously ran its sequel at uh, GDQ Hotfix, and uh, yeah, this is a really fun game. It's going to move really, really fast uh, for the first uh, little stretch of time, and uh, then it'll slow down a little bit, and I might have some time to explain what's going on. But, uh, just to get to the, uh, screen here, and, uh, time will start, uh, when Echo appears on the next screen after the, uh, black transition screen. Uh, there's not really a good way of counting it down, but, uh, I'll just, uh, Go ahead. Oh, and uh, one thing, this game does have some uh, flashing lights in the first level, so if you're sensitive to that, you might want to look away for like the first uh, 20 seconds or whatever. But uh, with that, uh, let's get right to making this dolphin go fast. And uh, three, two, one, go. And immediately we jump into the sky and uh, trigger a storm. And goodbye, family. It's okay though. We'll we'll get him back. We'll find him. Uh, this next level is very short because uh, we exploit a glitch that occurs when we bring up the sonar map on the opposite screen from the exit, and that's the level. Normally, that does require you to have to see through the whole level to get a glyph, and in this case, we'll just bypass it. The Undercaves here is the first kind of tricky level in this game. Uh, not a lot of opportunities to surface for air. And being a dolphin, uh, you need air, because otherwise you suffocate, as most living creatures typically do. There is actually a rather large, slightly famous enemy in this level. We're not going to be saying eight arms in this particular level on the run, however, as we can just do that very handy little glyph skip there. By charging at exactly the right angle, we get the glyph to sort of do what it's supposed to do, but in the wrong way, and push us through it. Yep, the uh, game sort of assumes, oh, you're colliding with the glyph, let me uh, push you in the opposite direction you're facing. So if you... Uh hit the uh, glyph at, you know, a backward angle, it ends up pushing you through the glyph rather than away from the glyph. We're supposed to rescue some dolphins on this level, but uh, there's no reason to. It gives you a song that's kind of useful, but we don't actually use it in the speed run. Uh, this level has a bizarre glitch. I'll let Mech try to explain it. So what he's doing here is he's positioning himself diagonally, up left against the rock, then charging towards the jellyfish, and that makes Echo just glitch through the wall, and we go home free because we get the end of the level. It just works, we don't know how, we don't know why, it just works. I think it has something to do with uh, when Echo charges, he locks onto the enemy, and that kind of forces him down a little bit because he's aiming at the jellyfish that's uh, at a slightly below a 45 degree angle to him. That's correct. And this one, we actually push that shell along. We're normally supposed to use something else to break that rock, but because we just pushed the original shell along, we don't need to go and gather that. And this is the first of many instances of walls being suggestions in this game. There's uh, just enough of a lack of hitbox there to kind of phase Echo through. Walls being suggestions is a common theme in the Echo series. You'll see it come up if you see runs of the other games. Gotta carry these stars over to break a rock wall here. 
and I am pretty low on oxygen. This is the one area in the game where oxygen is kind of scarce because this glyph skip requires uh, a little more complicated inputs than the other ones and takes a little longer. So as you can see, I'm losing health now, but managed to get through. And uh, this level is very straightforward. I just need to get on roughly this angle here. And uh, if you have any donations, I mean, this level's about a minute long, I guess. So now would be a good time. We do indeed. We have a $250 donation from Zero Praxis. And they say, so <laughs> proud and happy to see my friend Grimshins showing off his talent and dedication in a cool run of an awesome, unique game. Good luck wow. today. Kill it. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Zero Praxis. <laughs> that is incredibly generous. Oh. Uh, so, like I said, this game uh, has been moving pretty quickly. You may have remembered uh, Angry Video Game Nerd released a video about this game a while ago. It took him an hour and a half to get to an area that we got to in a minute and a half. So, yeah, we're kind of booking it. This uh, glyph skip here is one of the more finicky ones. It takes a couple attempts sometimes. And uh, this level is kind of famous for having some really nasty ice cubes that can crush you. But uh, we're going to skip past most of them. And again, walls being suggestions, glitch into there, swim to the exit. You can actually die if you do that glitch incorrectly, which I've unfortunately done a fair few times. But Grim masters that one. All right, managed to actually get a fast key glyph pick up there by hitting it while I was in midair. Uh, that's actually fairly uncommon, so that bodes well. And, and the storyline of the game, we've been sent to find the Big Blue, who is a big blue whale who we've just spoken to, and has immediately sent us off to go and contact someone else. Yep. I was thinking about trying to explain the plot of this game, like, as I was playing it, but it's a lot funnier if I don't. And there will be a... There's a section where we're going to have a lot of downtime, where I can kind of go over some stuff. But we're back into warmer waters now, with Island Zone here, which has some of my favorite music in the game. In every other version of the game, you'd actually have to do a reprise of, uh the open ocean, but in the original version for America, you don't have to do open ocean the second time. It's even there in the Game Gear version. Yep. And here's the one time we'll see good old Eight Arms, who we uh, quickly just leave in the dust there. Yep. Uh, normally you're supposed to swim slowly past him to avoid taking damage, but that's slow. This is speed run, so we just damage boost through him, and he's not nearly strong enough to kill us, so make it to the end. And Deep Water is aptly named. It's one of the taller levels in the game, vertically. Just gotta swim to the bottom of it. Got a bunch of very narrow passages. Lots of enemies, lots of spikes that can hurt you. Nasty stuff. There is a magic pixel that I can get on and avoid all of those spikes there. So don't have to do any back and forth movement. And in case you're wondering, yes, that is a apparent giant sentient DNA strand. Uh, we'll explain more about that later. <laughs> Don't have time to explain it, because now we're in Atlantis. Mecco just found Atlantis. Use this block to push through the current, break through these chains. Go down here, hit this glyph off screen to remove another chain, and got another... Kind of annoying glyph skip here. Oh, and we got the ceiling exit. That is a funny glitch where the end of level bounding box appears in the ceiling rather than the side of the screen where it's supposed to. In the and library here, we're going to do a series of glitches to get this block to sort of glitch its way over to the other side. Normally you're supposed to do this up and down thing on all of these gaps, but thanks to some careful camera work... Yeah, I managed to push it over all of the gaps because uh, collision 
when objects are off screen is uh, let's be charitable and call it unique. You were, I suppose, actually get a key for that wall we just broke there, but they are coded it to be able to be destroyed by a charge, so... Yep, that, uh... That was corrected in every other version of the game, so... Safe to assume that that wasn't meant to be. That jump I just did there is the most difficult mandatory jump in the game. It uh, requires very precise angle and a lot of speed in order to make it. And we're going to go down here and perform another sonar map exit. This, this final level here, the City of Forever, uh, this one's so difficult there's actually a de developer intended shortcut that they've just put just there. Yeah, the level is probably the hardest level in the game if you don't take that shortcut, and the developers were merciful to that. And, uh... There's time travel in this game, by the way. We are being sent 55 million years back into the past in order to help the asteroid obtain one of his missing globes. His the asteroid there. being the uh, giant DNA strands that we saw. And I know Mech is very uh, excited about this. I love Looking everything. Forward. I love everything about this section. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, these fish we're seeing there, those are Dunkleosteus. They're a placoderm that went extinct uh, 358 million years ago ish. Uh, that Pteranodon is based on the art, based on some actual rather famous artwork that you can very easily find on the internet. They went extinct about 80 million years ago, so not really matching up on that 55 million years ago. Walls, once again, a suggestion. And, uh, coming up is a very difficult glitch that could potentially softlock the game, but I'm gonna go for it anyway. This particular glitch... sort of manipulate the camera in such a way that the game doesn't really know what to do with Echo once the Pteranodon lets go of us. Everything seems normal now. That will change. Almost. Did not manage to initiate the zip, but that's okay, because did not softlock the game. If you do that correctly, Echo will get stuck in the wall for a moment, then violently zip through to the uh, right of the screen, passing through two walls and skipping about half of the level in the process. Uh, if you mess that up, you end up stuck floating through the air in an infinite loop. Uh, you, your only choice at that point is to wait until Echo runs out of air, because thanks to that uh, reverse air swim we did to get up to the Pteranodon, the game thought we were still underwater. Now, for as dangerous as that trick is, uh, it only saves about 12 seconds doing, versus doing the level, the normal speedrun route. So, uh, you know... You try to go for it for swag, but there's backup if it doesn't work. Unfortunately, we got the backup. A uh, thing that's chasing us is a trilobite. They're the worst enemy in the game. For sure. Uh, they happen to be incredibly tenacious. They home in on you. They follow you across the entire level. And uh, most of the time, they're doubled up. So two are overlapping each other, which means it takes uh, twice as many hits to get rid of them. Trolobites themselves went extinct about 252 million years ago, so wouldn't have seen the dinosaurs. Certainly wouldn't be around at 55 million years ago. And now comes Trilobite Circle, which, uh, as you can guess, has even more of the Trilobites. And this one that's going to follow me is particularly nasty because it's going to do its level-headed best to try to mess up this glyph skip that I'm doing here. Fortunately, we beat it in the race. And just need to get up here and get the flying trilobite in the level exit. Dark water here is normally actually a very long level that requires you to go down to the very bottom, uh, go through a whole sequence of unlocking glyphs. We're just going to skip all of that. Yeah, very convenient. One of those shortcuts is developer intended. This glyph skip, of course, is not. 
so through the glyph. Yeah. We are going to play Connect Four, and I really didn't want to get red because it's slightly slower, but I also don't want to die. So I'm going to just go ahead and... Uh, so, we were sent back to the past to retrieve the asteroid's missing globe. As it turns out, the only reason he was missing a globe is that he sent us back into the past to retrieve his missing globe. This game hits us with a lovely time paradox there. Well, thankfully, just have to redo Deep Water once more. And return the asteroid's globe in order to get the next step towards saving our family. Okay, so for whatever reason, the red globe takes longer than the other ones to spawn in, so that does waste a couple seconds versus literally any other color, but you'll notice we no longer have an air bar. That means we can breathe underwater now. We don't have to surface for air, which would be much more helpful if, uh, we didn't have to spend hardly any time underwater for the rest of the game. Indeed, the next two levels are just repeats. Firstly, just a quick City of Forever, which we just do the exact same shortcut in. And then with one more use of the time machine, we head back to the Hour of the Storm itself. Yes, uh... Here, according to the asteroid, we are about to face the unseen enemy. So we're going to go ahead and uh, activate the storm again, so there will be some brief flashing lights. And this time, we are taken up with our family into space. That's right, there are aliens in this game. The tube is the first of two auto scrollers in this game, and it's probably the easier one. Uh, it's still very easy to die as these rhombuses, these, these shapes that are coming down, basically act as walls, and they will do their best to try to crush you against the wall. The tube slowly increases in speed as we go through it. Thankfully, though, we do know the path, so we will be able to get through here quite easily. Once we get to this section with the zappers, we can just stick Echo's nose in roughly the center of the screen, and we will bypass all of the uh, barriers because their hitbox does not extend to cover their entire sprites. At a certain point, uh, there won't be any more barriers, and we just need to deal with these zappers. If I uh, keep tapping the D-pad in sort of a rhythmic fashion to keep Echo in roughly the center of the screen, uh, the zaps will not kill me. Uh, so, this and the next auto-scroller amount to, like, uh, more than seven minutes of game time, so if you've got any donations, now would be a really excellent time to, uh, get as many of them out as you need to. We have got plenty of love for your run here and for Echo. We're gonna start with one big one here. We got a hundred dollar donation from Nally Nally that says, <laughs> Speedy Dolphins are the best, Girl Grimshins and Echo. Thank you so much, Nally. Uh, that is uh, my sister. Uh, we grew up playing this game. She was really into marine biology and uh, I was into video games. So it was a uh, match made in heaven. Well, that explains the next donation we've got here. We got a, uh, a $10 do donation from Ali saying, hoping for some cool, totally legitimate marine biology facts from your <laughs> run. Good luck. Uh, I guess uh, that counts as a totally legitimate marine biology request channel point redemption for me. Uh, so, uh, right now, we are on planet Vortex, where uh, the aliens live, and uh, the reason that we were able to get there so quickly is because dolphins can actually travel at the speed of light, uh, but only when they're two-dimensional and only when they have been blessed by the powers of magical talking DNA strands. Sounds accurate to me. These uh, enemies are uh, infinite respawning, uh, and fun 
thing about this stage, even though we have regenerating hell, uh, we don't have much in the way of iframes. So if I am overlapped by an enemy, I will constantly take damage. Uh, Echo can survive about 14 hits, so that means that in 14 frames, I will be dead if I overlap one of these enemies, so... Oh, and I can also get crushed against these walls, which, uh, is pretty excellent, but, uh... Yeah, go ahead, we've still got a lot of this level yet, just keep them coming. We have got a $50 donation from Dan R Let I apologize in advance. Let's try this out. We got Dan Robinshot Kiru. And they're saying ah, yes. Grimshin. I, I do apologize for that, but, <laughs> it. but uh, Grimshins, congrats on making it to ADGQ, brother. It's been a long road, but we're all so proud. Here's to a great run with time traveling dolphins and to a great cause. Thank you, Dan. That's awesome. Appreciate it. And we also have a $25 donation from Sparky Lurk Dragon saying, Hi, Grimshins. Greetings from the Caverns of Hope community. I may be more of a lore hound within the Echo fandom, but it's always a treat seeing any Echo game snapped in half by a skilled runner. Who needs swimming slowly to keep control? We're all about swimming fast for our breath here. Thanks for bringing our beloved dolphin back to GDQ, and good luck. Thank you. Caverns of Hope is a really awesome Echo community. Definitely check them out. And we've also got a $100 donation from Jonathan saying, Super Metroid isn't being run this event, but you're playing Echo the Dolphin, so I guess this donation goes to saving <laughs> the animals anyway? <laughs> we will try our best. And uh, we've also got a $25 donation from Weewa saying, Years ago, for Christmas, my parents bought sweet, innocent, seven-year-old me a cute little dolphin <laughs> game for my brand new game gear. After getting past the nightmares, this became my favorite game and the reason I've kept my game gear fully functional over the years. Glad to catch this run and hopefully we'll be seeing that plush find a nice home, totally normal home, with me. <laughs> That is a really cool Echo the Dolphin plushie. I, uh, I might have to get in on that myself. So, uh, fun thing about this level is uh, that uh, the developers of this game were uh, very inspired by uh, Pink Floyd, uh, hence the title of this level, Welcome to the Machine. And I believe the total combined time you spend in auto-scrollers between the previous level and this one is actually the exact length of uh, the song Welcome to the Machine, the album version. Well, that's correct. This level's also a little bit notorious. If you die at any point, you go straight back to the start. Yes, no checkpoints in this version. The Japanese release of the game, however, did add three checkpoints scattered throughout the level. But uh, the Japanese version also corrected nearly every glitch that we use in the speedrun, so it doesn't get a lot of love from the uh, speedrunning community, unfortunately. It also is a Sega CD or Mega CD version, sort of a midpoint between the two, which does actually include some new levels, which uh, I want to use as a tile set from Echo 2, but unfortunately, well, well, fortunately in this case, the all of the glitches were removed in this in CD version as well, so mostly when it is an Echo 1 run, it's mostly just the original. The, uh, the final boss is also substantially easier on the Genesis, even though it's due to a mechanical reason that seems like it would make it harder. Be very careful going through this one, as the enemies do keep coming until we get to the very end there, and fortunately the life of my frames has done myself in, and I suspect anyone who's gotten this far into the game knows quite the, uh, the joy of this level, we'll say. As recently as last night for me. <laughs> yep. Alright, coming up to the last boss. And, uh, fun thing, if I die here, I've got to redo that level. 
the Vortex Queen here, we have three points we have to attack. Her mouth, her two eyes, and then her head. Normally, you are supposed to just charge the mouth. Uh, however, Grimshins is doing a very risky Elliot mouth attack sequence there. We're normally supposed to wait for it to sort of be there, but Grimshins doesn't wait. I'll follow this up by standing in sort of the closest safe spot on the eyes. We wanted to be very careful here as this does lag the system a bit. However, with her eyes gone, all that's left is their head. Time is coming up when uh, the uh, screen fades to black. So pretty soon here. Time. Okay, so we saved the animals, we saved our pod, we defeated the alien queen, and now we are swimming back to Earth. Uh, what, what, what was time on that, by the way? Give us a second to catch us up there. It is a 23.35. All right, that is uh, within about 30 seconds of my PB, so that is fantastic. Oh man, that was that was a clean run because uh, if I had done anything incorrectly on the jaws of the queen there, I would have gotten swallowed, which is of course an instant death. Would have forced me to replay that uh, nearly six minute long auto scroller again. Uh, yeah, just I couldn't be happier with how that went, and I'm. So happy. Thank you so much to everyone who donated. Uh, this is a uh, cause that is very important to me. Uh, I lost my uncle due to cancer uh, back in uh, 2007. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, this is a cause very near and dear to my heart. Thank you so much for uh, giving everyone. Uh, thank you, Mekion, for offering the great commentary. And uh, thanks for uh, the excellent hosting, Argic. Just uh, couldn't be happier right now. Well, thank you for this amazing run. You've done a fantastic job with it. Uh, everybody has been enjoying it. They've been loving it. And with that amazing Echo the Dolphin run here, we've still got more donations coming in for it here. We got a $15 donation from Matt who says, loved the Echo run, could never get past the first few levels, so it was great to see the whole thing. We got a $10 donation from Jerem who says, keep on the amazing work. Here is to Grimshin's obliterating echo, that beloved game that ruined my childhood. And we got a $50 donation in here from Valfas that says, this is such a super weird game, but it's a super weird game that I love. Let's go time traveling dolphins. And we got a $5 donation from Anonymous saying, First time donating, Echo the Dolphin always fascinated me, but I never watched actual gameplay from it. Thank you to the GDQ staff for continuing to run this event, serving as a shining beacon for this new year. And we've also got a $5 donation here from Big the Dave that says, Great runs, great commentary. This goes to the Sonic 06 glitch exhibition. Great runs, great commentary. Wait, is there an echo in here? Thank you very much, everybody, for your donations there. Don't forget that you can put your donations towards any of our donation incentives that we have currently running. We are running quite a few. We've got two for Sonic 06, and we have our bonus Skyrim game as well. Bonus game one, the Elder Scrolls Skyrim. It is currently sitting at, if I do a quick refresh, get an update here for Skyrim. Currently sitting at 39,608 
$18.40 out of that $45,000. And of course, we have Ever coming up, ever closer, really running up on us, going really fast, is that Sonic 06 glitch exhibition. If you want to see even more Sonic 06, if you want to see the fun glitches that we have coming up, then be sure to donate towards that one. It's currently at $6,849.62 out of 50. 15,000. We have, I believe, about seven hours before that one comes up. So we can do it. We can